How's it going you guys? So after having the car on the road for not even a week, I'm already running into problems. Uh, I was driving on the highway the other day and noticed the car getting super loud. So I looked under the hood and my turbo has come completely loose from a manifold. So all the nuts came loose. I'm pretty sure the studs are still all in there. So yeah, I'm going to jack it up. I, we got the quick jack that I showed in the last video. You can watch that if you haven't seen it. But I haven't tested it out yet, so we'll test that out. I think I'm still going to have to drive on boards because my car's too low. I don't think they'll clear it. And for you guys who didn't see the last video of the hydraulic lift, all I have to do to jack up my car now is take these hoses from the compressor right there, slide these guys under the car into position. It just barely doesn't clear, so I still am going to have to roll up on a couple wood blocks to get them under there. I wasn't going to start it because the exhaust is going to get a hot, but I kind of have to now, so I'll let you guys hear it. Alright, see how this thing does. Look at that. Is that the last one? No. Jeez. That is un freaking real. So just getting a first look at it, I really don't think I'm going to be able to do it without taking it off the car, the turbo and the manifold and everything, but I'm going to try because that's just a lot of extra work that I really don't want to do. Got to disconnect the oil lines and all that. So I'm just going to take off like the intercooler pipe in here and the down pipe and then see if I can lift the turbo up and get it going and then hopefully I can get in there with swivels and different wrenches or whatever and get it bolted back up let's see all right you guys so i picked up a little bit of materials here i got the gasket because who knows where that other one went i got this stud which is longer than you know compare here this is the old one right there so this one's a little bit longer i only got one of these because i'm only the only place it will work is in this spot right here because there's nothing underneath the turbo here the other one's the turbo will get in the way and the reason I got longer is so I can double nut it on this one and then I talked to a guy at a turbo shop by my house to ask him advice on why it came loose and he said to try hard washers so they're just hard washers they don't expand and contract like the lock washers will do I guess they'll expand and contract too much and then they lose their locking ability and wiggles loose so got those got some nuts and I also ordered in a bung for both of these. And then I'm also going to order in a test pipe. So I'll get the bungs welded on to this guy somewhere around here. Get the test pipe in and get the exhaust done out of the way, completed. Might get a little bit extra power from that too, just having that full 3 inch instead of that 2 inch. And then no cat, more flow. And then I also got these bulbs, which I'm going to do first here. These bulbs really, really suck. Oh, those aren't even them. Here it is. These bulbs really suck. You can see it's like melted and all dark. But if you're going to do this clear headlight uh, cover, you got to be really careful because it made the light output absolutely shit. I literally cannot see the road with them, at least with these bulbs in. Hopefully these bulbs will help. 100% more light. But yeah, it's basically straight at the ground, and if I'm like on a dark road by myself, it's really sketchy. You gotta have high beams on, or you're driving like 20k, and it's still sketchy. So nice aesthetics, but really bad light output. All right, so there's the new one. That's the old one. Kind of hard to tell. I think this one does look brighter though. 
Okay, I'm pretty much done here. These two front ones, I got double knotted. Got the intercooler piping back in. But I had to take the entire exhaust off because I dropped a freaking nut in there. So, and here's why I can't use this piece because it's welded there. I ordered a test pipe though, so I'll put that in later. And yeah, I just gotta get that nut out. Hey guys, so the car's still having issues that I'm trying to figure out as far as stalling goes. So pretty much whenever I go wide open throttle and then put the clutch in, it doesn't catch the idle and stalls out. So I've tested a bunch of things. First it was moving the mass airflow sensor away, which did help a lot. And then I replaced the mass airflow sensor with a OEM N62. That kind of helped as well, but it was still stalling. So I checked the throttle position sensor output voltage at idle, which I just stuffed, stuffed a paper clip in there and then read the voltage, put one to ground, one to there, and it's reading like point, oh shit, it's reading like point four eight, or no, it's reading like point four two before, so I adjusted it by taking the potentiometer there and just rotating it and then tightening it the bolts down again. So I adjusted it from like point four two to point five and that didn't really help but still that's how it's supposed to be so it probably helped a little bit i replaced the fuel filter i've checked the spark plugs i haven't checked the injectors but they're brand new so i don't think i think they're fine i've disconnected the blow off valve line and capped it just in case that's venting to atmosphere so that could be contributing to it and i'm kind of running out of ideas here I've just started emailing Martin at Enfilseed, the guy who tuned my ECU, and sent me it. And he's been, he told me to check what codes my ECU was throwing out. So, I didn't even know you could do this. But you can actually check the codes on here without having a scanner. So, I'll show you how I do that. Car has to be off. So all you do is put the ignition on. And the LED should be on. That's just to make sure that the light works. Then you have to twist. It's gonna be, I'm not gonna be able to do this with one hand, so you gotta stick your screwdriver in there and turn it all the way counter or clockwise. You might be able to. Hold it for a couple seconds. And then you go all the way back. And then this thing will start blinking. So it's three short pause, short pulses and then four fast ones, which is 34, which is the knock sensor or detonation. And so I told Martin that that was what it was telling me. And he said that knock sensor is like right down under and in there. He said that the harness that connects right here the main harness, so the sub harness in there often goes bad, so he told me to inspect that in the sensor, which I didn't take it out fully because it's really hard to do, but just from looking at it through here, I don't see anywhere it's been rubbing or anything wrong with it. So I reset the code. There's a lot of things that can trip that. It doesn't mean necessarily that I'm detonating. For example, just having solid engine mounts can trigger that. Uh, or yeah, like just a lot of things can throw that code. So I erase the code, which all I have to do is put it back here, hold it for a couple seconds. Now it's back to the, just where the LED's on. So we'll see if I have the code still. So now it's reading code 55, which means there's no codes on there. We erased it. 
so we can put it back. So now it has no codes. I don't know exactly what happens when it goes into code 34. I think it can, uh, we'll put it into some kind of limp mode where it'll adjust the timing and won't run properly. So I thought that was going to be the problem, but I already went for a drive yesterday when I figured this out and it still was doing the same thing. So I just want to go for a drive, show you guys what's happening and maybe you guys can give me some advice. I think what I'm going to do next is a boost leak test and see what we can find with that. So yeah. any of that so I'm just in first gear right now wide open throttle that was actually pretty good let's go second gear clutch in dead So we're back, let's see if we got any codes on this thing. So it's 55 and it was still stalling out. So in my thinking that kind of rules that out. Um, I don't know, I'll just have to keep an eye on that and make sure that it's not throwing code 34 ever. But I went through almost all gears and was given her and it didn't throw the code. So I don't know, I'm going to do boost leak check next. Probably not today, and I don't know how much footage I got. I might include that in this. Maybe not. Maybe in the next video. Um, I'm still waiting for my test pipe to come in. I also got a new slave cylinder because um, I got air in the system. And I'm pretty sure it was through the slave cylinder, but I'll tell you guys more about that later. And yeah, so I guess that's it then. Thank you guys for watching. Comment if you have any idea what's going on. If you have any experience with a problem similar to this or any ideas, just let me know because I'm kind of running out of ideas and any feedback would be appreciated. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.